We all love the sound of money, and a $1,500 sign-on bonus sounds even better. That's right, Belicio Foods of Jackson is offering a $1,500 sign-on bonus to new employees. Receive an extra $100 your first six weeks, then $400 after day 90, and $500 after day 180. Don't wait. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers today. That's BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Come work for a company who truly values their employees. Come work for Belicio Foods. Show some love for the graduating seniors in your life with custom-made gear from Zip Printing in Jackson. Yard signs, banners, screen-printed t-shirts, and more. Zip Printing can do it all. Visit yourtotalmedia.shop to browse all of Zip's gear to show your school spirit for the class of 22. Zip also has everything you need for graduation parties like custom photo cards, invitations, and napkins. Call 740-286-3023 or find them on Facebook at Zip Printing Signs and Marketing. Well, happy Thursday, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on Main Street TV. Of course, Jennifer here to start off your morning with our good friend, Rich, and he is from Mr. Speed. Woo! Welcome! Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> good morning. We are so excited to talk to you today because... You are actually going to be performing this coming weekend, I think Saturday night, at the Wild Turkey Festival, and it is going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. It's been a number of years since we've been there, and we've totally got a brand new show. We've got a brand new band for the most part, a much better band than we had the last time we were there. So we're super excited about, first of all, our first outdoor show of the year since all this craziness has been going on. So we couldn't be more happy to be there at the Wild Turkey Festival with everybody. That is so awesome. And the Wild Turkey Festival is uh, near and dear to my heart for so many reasons, but I always love it because it is the, the one that kicks off our entire summer um, of fairs and festivals. So it's always the first one. It's always, you know, just you're your dipping your toe and getting back outside and enjoying and all that fair and festival food. Do you have a fair, fair and festival food that's your favorite? You know, when you wear spandex you got to be really careful <laughs> about what you what you eat but i don't mind uh, an, an elephant ear every once in a while the good news is i think the elephant ear booth is relatively close to the stage so you don't have to go far we just get a couple fans to bring them up during the show there you go <laughs> Span listen spandex is stretchy it's forgiving it's okay <laughs> Yeah. Okay. To a point. <laughs> to a point. You are correct. <laughs> so let's talk about um, Mr. Speed for a minute. How did y'all uh, get together? And then what can people expect to see at the Wild Turkey Festival on Saturday? Well, for anybody who hasn't seen us, we're almost 28 years old. Wow. I started doing Mr. Speed in late 1993 played our first show on June 24th, 1994. And it's just been an uphill climb ever since. I've been through probably 15 bass players, 15 drummers, and I've had three guitarists in all those years. And we've gone through different versions of the stage show, but what we're offering right now and what we're bringing to the Wild Turkey Festival this weekend is in my humble opinion, the best representation of the 7980 era of KISS, the Dynasty Unmasked era. So no one else on the planet, no other KISS tribute band on the planet is doing what we're doing. They're not wearing the costumes we're wearing. They're not putting props up there like we've got. We've got a seven foot tall serpent. We've got <laughs> two five foot tall cats that sit on either side of Quentin and keep an eye on him while he's playing his drums. <laughs> and then of course, you've got the flashy outfits, you know, because when Kiss did the Dynasty and Unmasked Era, they lost a lot of fans because they thought that they were too colorful. They got away from the, the black and chrome you see behind, 
you know, the, that they were wearing during the, uh, the Love Gun era. So I feel for us, we always like to get outside the box. We don't like to be stereotyped like every other KISS band that's on the planet. So we like to be different. And I know that when we get there, we're going to get two hours of classic KISS with as much pomp and circumstance as we can throw at you. Well, we look so forward to it. And okay, I have to ask because I, I will admit I'm not uh, omniscient when it comes to KISS. So, <laughs> good word. <laughs> or anything else for that matter. So, yeah, we would never, <laughs> we would never accuse me of that. But, uh, Mr. Speed, where does that fall in? Uh, where did that name come from? In 1976, Kiss put out an album called Rock and Roll Over. And Paul Stan wrote a song that was called Mr. Speed. So, most tribute bands, whoever, whoever the artists are paying tribute to, they typically try to find a really popular song title that will identify them as a tribute to that artist. We kind of went left of center. <laughs> we thought, well, if you're going to know who Mr. Speed is or what it is, you're really, really going to be a big Kiss fan. But I'll be honest with you, Dan, I think it was kind of like the kiss of death too, because over the years, people have thought we've been a speed metal band, a uh, thrash band, you know, they don't, it's not readily recognizable as a Mr. S or I'm sorry, as a Kiss song. So, but we're very proud of it. And I'll tell you this story. In 2000, I got to meet Paul Stanley in Chicago. And when I was introduced to him, Tommy Thayer at the time, the road manager, and he said, Paul, this is Rich from the Kiss tribute band, Mr. Speed. And Paul looked at me and said, cool song to name your band. Yes. So that was all I needed. <laughs> there you go. I mean, affirmation from the man himself. That doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> no. Well, that is so cool. So, all right. So um, you will be performing for a couple of hours on Saturday mm -hmm. at the Wild Turkey Festival. Now, let's just be honest. Kiss has been known to be, um, as you said, colorful um is this going to be a family friendly show or should we keep the kids at home <laughs> oh my god no bring the kids good bring the kids to the show you know kiss isn't known for being one of those types of bands that offends people with their language you know if you if you don't like the blood routine go get a popcorn if you don't you like go. the fire breathing, go get some cotton candy. <laughs> but I think once people see it and the way that we portray it, we try to do it with the utmost respect to KISS because there are people that are going to see us on Saturday that have never seen us before, let alone maybe seen a KISS tribute band. And we want to give them the best representation of our KISS tribute that we can. So it's our job to play as hard as we can and have fun with people. We're not gonna do it exactly like KISS does, you know, because we're real people too. We're, we're not them, obviously. So, but we want to draw you in a few hours and make, make you believe that we are. That is so cool. And I know that you all are, are highly touted and um, do a fantastic job um, by all accounts. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, a little bit of the history of KISS. You know, they were obviously <laughs> very unique and uh, there's never been a band like them. Where did they come up, do you know, with their, you know, with their ideas and their costumes and all of that stuff? How did that come to be? To my knowledge from reading a lot of magazines when I was young, they, it's just an extension of their personality. So you've got four <laughs> different individuals in the band. So. You know, Gene was very much into comic books and the classic monster movies, uh, you know, Bela Lugosi, Boris Karloff, and Lon Chaney. Uh, even Godzilla uh, was a huge influence on Gene. Paul Stanley saw himself as a rock star. He always wanted to be that sexy guy on stage that, you know, 
the guys wanted to be and the women wanted. Um, Ace was always interested in space travel and still to this day is very much. Uh, that's a huge part of who Ace is. And Peter, if I remember it correctly, he was sitting there, he, he owned a cat and the cat was sitting on his lap and he looked at the cat and thought, what if? And so uh -huh. that's really, I think, how it all developed. And if you think about it, they created something that has really stood the test of time. And it puts kids like me, it gives us an escape. Uh, we can jump into the music. You can sit there and hold that album cover. Uh, and yes, I'm old enough to know what an album is. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you sit there and you hold it in your hand and you can get lost in the image while you're listening to the music. And that was always the best part about growing up in that era of classic 70s rock for me was, was being able to get lost in that, not only the music, but the imagery on the album cover as well. You know, I love that. And I can remember, it, yes, we are old enough to remember those as well, even before they became cool again. <laughs> we right? remember them the first time around. <laughs> right, yes. But you are exactly right. I can remember getting those albums and just like like reading them and, and looking through the different uh, parts of them front and back and all that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really, really such a good way to, to put it. Um, so what will be some of the songs uh, of the era in which you all will be performing just so people can know what they're getting into on Saturday? Well, we stick to a pretty hit-oriented set. Uh, we might do one or two other songs that people might not be familiar with because one of the things that we take a lot of pride in is we're kind of ambassadors for KISS in a way, even though we're not on the payroll. Sure. So we, we want to educate people to know that there's more than just rock and roll all night and back. Because if I had a nickel for every time I've played a show in 28 years, we roll into town. Somebody says, "Are you guys going to play bad?" You know, it's it, it's all it almost goes hand in hand with just getting out of my truck. Someone's going to ask that question. But <laughs> you've got songs like "Shout It Out Loud" and "Detroit Rock City," and we open the show with a song called "King of the Nighttime World." And it's there's a lot of excitement and energy. You've got you know Mark, our Ace Fraley is going to be doing New York Groove shock me and quentin our drummer is going to be singing black diamond uh and beth um so there's a lot that we we offer and then we try to jump into the like one or two deep tracks like a vault track that we like to call them and and play just because there's going to be that one person there yep <laughs> that we're going to touch with that song and if we can touch one person there with a vault track then we've done our job you know what, and and that is, you know, when you're when you're a true fan of a band and their music, it's always so much fun to have them come out and play that song that you know and no one else does, and you're like, yeah, I know that one because I am diehard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and I think it, we like to flex our musical muscle, so to speak, because most Kiss bands can play all the the normal songs. Sure, but since day one. Mr. Speed, we've always been about playing those rare tracks and those deep cuts from the KISS catalog that people probably don't expect, but love hearing. And I always tell my band, it's got to be fun for us because if we're having a good time, then we know the people are going to be having a good time. That's exactly right. And, and uh, brush up on your KISS history a little bit before you go see the concert on Saturday and you'll be like, oh yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So I'm, I swear yeah. I'm sitting here thinking of the movie Role Models because <laughs> have you ever seen that movie? <laughs> yes, I have. Because <laughs> they do a lot of, Kiss, uh, a lot mm -hmm. of KISS references in that one. So that's a good one. If you haven't seen it, it's hilarious, by the way. <laughs> uh, there's a kid that steals the show. Um, so awesome. So how did you all, um, like, how do you do like your costumes and all that stuff? Do you make them yourself? Actually, we, we personally don't, but we, each one of us in the band right now worked with their own seamstress, uh -huh. costume, costume maker. Um, 
there are people out there in the world that make KISS costumes, but we aren't affiliated with any of those folks um, simply because what we're doing is so unique. You can't buy what we wear in a bag uh, on a website and pull it out and throw it on and go on and play music. You can't do that. So again, that was one of the reasons why we we try to be different than everybody else. We just want to be outside the box. My personal costume maker and boot maker is a guy by the name of Chris Francis, and he lives in Los Angeles. So five, six years ago, I flew out to LA and I had what's called a last made for my boots. So he can custom make boots for me. And, you know, for those of you watching out there and anyone who really cares, my boots cost $3,000. Holy so, moly. <laughs> well, because, you know, Jen, you need to do it right. And there's, there's guys that make costumes, but they're not shoe cobblers. So you have to be very, very careful when you're standing seven inches up off the ground. Yes. <laughs> and holding a guitar and trying to be somebody else and move around and make people believe in what they're watching. We get so much criticism from people, you know, these, these keyboard warriors that like to criticize us because we're not as energetic as Kiss was. Well, I'm 58 years old, <laughs> you know? And when, when Kiss was at the height of its popularity in the 70s, they were in their mid 20s, <laughs> you know? So there's a big difference with the energy level. Plus, I've got a replaced right knee. And there I'm not you making go. excuses. I'm not making excuses. I'm just being honest with you. It's scary sometimes to do what we do. But everybody <laughs> in the band worked with their own costume maker. That's awesome. And, and, you know, to be honest with you, as the leader of this band, I was so proud of everybody when we all got together and did our video for I Was Made For Loving You and we did a photo shoot and I got to see us all together because it made me, I, I was like a 14 year old kid again, <laughs> you know, and I'm in the band. It was cool. You know, that is so cool. And I'd forgotten about um, the platforms and the fact that you all have to walk <laughs> around on that like and you're right on a stage i mean artists fall off stages all the time with uh normal shoes on i can't yes. even imagine running around in those boots y'all are um very spry <laughs> some of us move better than others you know one of us gets to sit down the whole show so we won't talk about him but, you know. cheater huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade what I do for anything. I wouldn't want to be in any other band. I absolutely love what I do, and I love playing for people. Um, every chance we get an opportunity, you know, and and that's the whole point. If you're not having fun with it, as you said earlier, then then why do it, right? Right. Right. So, what are some of the fun places that you all have traveled around and performed? Well, let's see. We have been as far away as San Juan, Puerto Rico. Nice. We have been to Seattle. We've been to L.A. Uh, El Paso, Texas was unique um, because it's like one of the scariest, safest places on the planet. <laughs> um, there's, there, it, was, it was so bizarre. We played at a casino down there, and um, we were outside. It was a beautiful day, and there were so many things up in the sky. I don't know if they were alien ships, <laughs> if they were surveillance. Uh, what it was, you know, but it was it was a unique experience to say the least. Uh, we had to travel in a uh, a white van because if you travel in a black vehicle down there, you're looked at as something different, and you don't <laughs> think about that when you are putting a band together and you might go play for people that you might find yourself in a part of the world that is a little bit more unique than where you might reside. And the life is totally different. So that was a real unique experience for us. Um, you know, I we've got a show in Oslo, Norway, if you can believe it. Wow. Scheduled for this coming October. And I'm still negotiating the, uh, the trip with the promoter uh, because it's a long way to go for one show. So I'm trying to play two uh, while we're over there. But it's being talked about. So... 
that to answer your question the show hasn't happened yet <laughs> well that sounds like a blast but i'm sitting here thinking how do you get all your equipment and stuff like that to oslo norway how does that work <laughs> Well, we don't. To do something like that, the promoter will need to provide all the uh, the amplifiers and the drums. Makes sense. We will take we will take a guitar and our costumes and okay. go. That's okay. They're responsible for everything else. They have to yes. be your personal concierge, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. Very cool. No, that's so neat. And and you know, when you started this, I'll bet you never thought that you'd be traveling all over the world. So that must be so fun. It, it is mind blowing when I think about it. Um, the best part of what I do, and this is this may sound cheesy, but the best part of what I do is never knowing who might come up to see us at a show, who might personally walk up to me and want to talk to me after the show's over. Because at, at every show we do meet and greet after we're done playing. So we've played for two hours, and then we'll stand around and take photos with people and sell merchandise and sign autographs and things if, if people are into that. And you just never know whose life you might impact. So I take my KISS fanaticism and my passion that I have, and I can, I can give that energy to somebody else who might be having kind of a crummy day, but I don't know it. And they may go home with renewed energy about themselves, which makes what I do awesome. You know, I love that story because, um, you know, music certainly can impact your life in so many different ways. And um, the fact that that uh, you you might change somebody's outlook on life that day would make all the difference in the world and make it totally worth it. Are there I, I any? Can tell you a, yeah, sorry, is there a cool story? A, I can tell you a story from the very first year of the band, but I would become a, a sobbing fool here <laughs> on camera. And I don't really want to do that. I want to be that cool rock guy. <laughs> All right. Well, is there a less emotional story you can tell us then? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll write it on Saturday night when I get on stage. I love that. So, no, I love that, that you take the time to, um, you know, meet and greet with, with the people afterwards because it's, it's really cool. And um, that just means that you care because there's a lot of people. You could pack up your, your instruments and leave. And everyone yeah, would absolutely. say, uh, okay, they're gone. Absolutely. It's it's just like any, pro, you hear pro bands say the same thing. They're nothing without their fans. And we really do believe the same thing. Because if these people didn't spend time in their life to come to the Wild Turkey Festival, and especially stand there and watch us perform, then the event wouldn't have it, the longevity that it's got. And we certainly wouldn't be around for 28 years. So we never take that for granted because in all honesty, what I'm doing right now with Mr. Speed is not gonna last forever. I've been grateful to have had almost 28 years of doing it. Um, I've gotten really good at putting on makeup and lipstick in 28 <laughs> years, but uh, I'm not quite ready for it to end. Uh, maybe when I get to be 60 years old, I'll take a hard look at things and see where I'm at. That or, you know, you fall off your boots and break a hip, hey, right? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I don't think you're going to do that. I said no. you're spry, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. So, all right, before we let you go, two two more questions. Um, number one, what is your favorite song to perform? I'm going to tell you it's a song called Unholy off of the Revenge album uh, from 1992. It was when they weren't wearing the makeup, but it's, it's a real aggressive song. It's a different style. It's... A completely different guitar style than say rock and roll all night or strutter and i always like playing that song plus it has a challenging harmony part for me to sing behind it so i like to be challenged when i play the kiss music um so i'm going to say unholy okay very good fair enough now we we'll listen to that after after the show yeah we're going to jam out um, so also, uh, is there anything else you would like to tell our viewers before we let you go for the day? Because you spent a half hour of your hard earned time with us this morning. And we greatly appreciate it. Well, yeah, I want to tell everybody who's coming out to the show on Saturday night, bring at least one friend with you so we can pack that, that corner there on the street. Cause I remember what it looks like and let's everybody say a little, you know, prayer that the, the weather holds out. And we can have a great night under the stars playing some Kiss music and 
just come out ready to party, ready to be rock and roll all night and party every day, as they say. <laughs> I love that. Love that. Love that. All right. Well, Rich, thank you so much for spending your morning with us. And we cannot wait to see you on Saturday night. This is going to be so awesome. And the performance starts at what time? I am told we are hitting the stage at 830 and we will play till pretty close to 1030. Awesome. All right. You're right. Are you ready there? to party? Am I going to be, be there? there? Yeah. I might be. You never know. If I listen, if you see the crazy lady crowd surfing, you'll know it's me. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. Well, Rich, thank you so much for spending your morning with us. Mr. Speed at the Wild Turkey Festival this Saturday. We'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Now go, you know, get your voice ready for Saturday. All right. So our sweet James is not here today. Miss Courtney is here. Oh my gosh, we got through that. We did. <laughs> so I walked in this morning and she literally has half of the hair that she did when she came in this morning because half of it she has yanked out and it's on the floor. <laughs> yeah. But we did it. We you did, did it. James was not, it was good enough, even though he wasn't feeling well. He was good enough to give us a call and walk <laughs> me through that. Yeah, James so. is a little under the weather and, um, it was so funny. We had to tell him yesterday he was sick. <laughs> oh, I know, poor guy. I'm like James. Uh, he turned snow white and he was and he was sweating. And I said, James, are you all right? Yeah. Why? I'm like, you're sick. <laughs> and he was like, No, I'm not. <laughs> he got all offensive about it. We're yeah. like, No, you are you are he glistening was, and you are white as a sheet. He was absolutely denying it. He, he did trying. not want to come. He, he even broke out a bag of candy. He's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. You want some of my candy? I'm like, no, I don't want your candy. I don't want to touch don't anything. Want you're anything touching. you're touching. Because contrary to what we are saying, you're definitely sick. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but anyway, no, he's, uh, hopefully he's home and uh, feeling a little bit better. We gave him, Courtney and I gave him the lecture about vitamins and, and, and all of the, you know, fluids. liquids and, you know, eat your chicken soup and all that. So, yep. Mommy, mommy, Courtney and mommy, Jen, take care of our sweet James this morning. All right. So I think um, we're, we're just waiting on Philip. I think Philip, I saw him walk, stick, try to stick his head in a second ago. I think yeah. he thought that we were still busy, but, um, so He's our good coming. friend Phil will be here in just a minute. Oh, there he is. Philip Speak of the devil. Arrived. Not that you're a devil or anything. He's um well wearing the Pete hat this week. So yes, he's so a little, he's a little busy. Right. He's a little bit. <laughs> shall we say, disheveled, because yeah. he is Phil Buffington and Pete, <laughs> and Pete Wilson, Wilson this week. <laughs> and yep. I'm just going to say, one of those shoes, set of those shoes is hard to fill, let alone two, yeah. which is impossible. So thank you for spending uh, some time with us this morning. No and problem. Phil, his favorite thing to do is to be on this morning show. <laughs> <laughs> he, loves he loves it. it. Begs to be on. He's I like, do. when is Pete going on vacation <laughs> so I can spend time with you, Jen, in the morning? <laughs> I cannot wait to come in and talk about news. <laughs> and that yeah. is all a lie. <laughs> he loves to write it. Yeah. He does love to write it. You write it very well. well. Thank you. And you actually speak it very well. You just don't like to do so. I don't seek attention. I never, never did. <laughs> He's like, I, I just want to crawl under my desk and hopefully those girls will not find me. But we found him. So, you know, did you, so are you going to get to see Mr. Speed on Saturday? This is going to be so fun. I the Kiss Tribute Band. I can't remember who's going to be covering. That. I think maybe Jeremiah is going to go okay. to that. And uh, Red will be down there today for the opening ceremonies. Very good. And uh, a little bit on Friday too. Um, and then we'll have Jeremiah down on Saturday for the parade and the crowning and yeah, the queen things crowning like that. We'll have, some, Speed. we'll have some video footage of that. So that'll be good. That will be awesome. And again, great thing about the wild turkey festival is it always kicks off fair and festival season. So it's yep, the first one. It is. It's like, you know, even the newly crowned queens and things like that. It's their first parades and queen teas and all that stuff. So it's always a lot of fun. D don't forget, it does kick off today at yep. um, opening I ceremony. I think five. Five. Yep. And then karaoke tonight. <gasps> yeah. You should do that. Yeah, no way. <laughs> no way. So I asked Red the other day if he's going to sing karaoke. What do you say? He's done it before. I've That's, seen him do it. He said that he has done it before. He has. And I said, okay, what is your song of choice? And 
Do you did you guys hear what he said? Uh-uh. I'm sure it's a country song. Kiss an angel, good morning. Oh. Isn't that so cute? I thought it was going to be Ignition Remix by R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I just thought that was the most adorable thing. Is that a Marty Stewart song? I think so. Probably. He's real big in the Marty Marty Stewart. Stewart. Yeah, he does. He really does. I think it may be more classic than that, but he he, uh, covered it. Probably covered it. Yeah. I would guess. On on the go radio will be there also all weekend long. And um, Total Media Telegram has a um, booth set up. So find us there to sign up for your Telegram subscriptions. Most likely you'll see one of the Vinton County natives or me there. Very good. (laughs) Our our, sweet Courtney. That's our first time having a booth, isn't it? I think as far as long as I've been here. Yeah. She has less hair now because she just yanked half of it. (laughs) (laughs) She had to figure out how to get someone via Skype on. (laughs) You did a great job. You did a great job. Um, All right. And then, of course, Friday, our good friend Ben Ben Davis Davis Jr. Jr. opening for... Our good friend, Jess Kelly Adams. Yeah. And she will be here, I think, in the studio tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yep. Good. And and Fancy better be here, too. She (laughs) better bring that dog. Oh, okay. (laughs) We're like, okay, we love you, Jess, but we're (laughs) Fancy. So she's awful cute. So, yeah, lots and lots of great things going on uh, at the Wild Turkey Festival. And then, of course, Mr. Speed on Saturday night with a parade and all that stuff, so. All right, Phil, I know that you have lots of news to get to, so we will let you have the spotlight. Okay. Who's your favorite? <laughs> that is my favorite. <laughs> um, well, we had, I have a mix of good and bad news, I suppose. Uh, Tuesday, we had uh, two crashes in Jackson and Vinton County. Uh, the first happened in Vinton County early in the morning at about 8.55 a.m., and that was in the area of uh, State Route 93, and State Route 328. Uh, we got this report in on Tuesday afternoon from the Highway Patrol. Um, the crash occurred. Uh, there was a vehicle being driven by um, uh, Crystal Ratliff of MacArthur. And then there was a semi being driven by uh, a gentleman, uh, age 66, of Laurelville. They were both heading northbound on State Route 93. Um, and Miss Ratliff reportedly had slowed down for an animal that was crossing the road. And Lots of those on 93. Yeah, definitely, especially that stretch. Yeah. That's closer up toward uh, Logan County. Um, so when she slowed down, the semi behind her crossed the center line to avoid hitting her in the rear end and actually hit another vehicle oh, no. uh, head on. And unfortunately, the person that was hit head on uh, was transported to Holzer Hospital here in Jackson, oh. and he later died as oh. a result. Uh, there were no other injuries reported as a result of that crash, and it remains under investigation. So that's pretty unfortunate. Um, three vehicles involved in that, uh, and the, the individual who uh, passed away was Brian Christensen, and he's age 58 of Sunbury, Ohio. Oh, that's so, so sad. I hate to hear that. Yeah. Uh, then just a couple of hours later here in Jackson County, we had um, a semi-truck was heading uh, westbound off of the U.S. 35 exit onto uh, State Route 32 and overturned. Uh, Luckily, he was the only individual involved in that crash, and he only sustained minor injuries. He was treated on the scene. Yeah, but when a semi wrecks, that's a big deal. And he had a a lot of um, debris that scattered across the roadway, and it resulted in the Roadway being closed, that westbound, those two westbound lanes on State Route 32, they were closed for about four and a half hours. Um, so they had Jackson wow. Fire, Jackson Police, Highway Patrol, EMS, uh, lots of people out there on the scene. They had to divert traffic onto uh, US 35 uh, for a little while there before they could get the roadway open. Luckily, like I said, nobody was seriously injured. So they got that taken care of as fast as they could. Um, both of these will be coming up in. Uh, likely Saturday's edition of the Telegram, so you can learn more about both of those. Um, As far as the good news side of things, um, our local job and family services director, Tammy Osborne-Smith, was at the commissioner's meeting on Tuesday morning, and this is some pretty big news. It was a fairly brief announcement, but it it carries a lot of weight. Um, She informed the commissioners that after years of talking and and trying their best to come up with a plan, they're going to apply for 
about eighty-six thousand dollars in funding through ODOT's Office of Transit, and that doesn't—that's not a lot of money because it's the first year um, of this program. They're trying to establish uh, Jackson County's first public transit system. What? Yeah. Finally. Are you kidding? Nope. So that first, she said that the next time around, if this funding is secured, they would apply for hundreds of thousands of dollars um, to further the program. But the year one uh, mainly is planning, uh, seeking a transportation coordinator for the county. And and then from there, they would be able to um, apply for, like I said, hundreds of thousands of dollars to establish a transportation hub, to buy vehicles, to hire drivers, all that. So, I mean, this will be wow. a process. It's already been a process. But as she brought up, I mean, there's 422 square miles here in Jackson County, and it's home to just over 32,000 people. And a good percent, I think 12.8% or no, actually 20% of the county's population lives below the federal poverty level. Um, so owning a car is sort of a big deal around here yeah. when, you're, when you're talking about those kind of numbers. And a lot of people that live in the county, I think the average drive for people driving to work is just over, it's about a half an hour is the average oh, drive wow. okay. for people to drive to and from work. And you know, there are a lot of employers, there's hundreds of employers in the county, and the biggest complaint is that you can't find um, em- employees that can make it to work sometimes, especially, you know, at our factories like mm-hmm. Belicio and General Mills. I mean, we had that happen, you know, at the restaurant or right. whatever. Like, I don't have a ride. Yep. And, I mean, that's that's been, that's been an issue for a long time. So they've been <gasps> in communication with other uh, JFS-run uh, programs like this that have sought funding through ODOT's Office of Transit. I think Perry County is, has had theirs in place for probably six to eight years, something like that. Okay. And um, they've got dozens of drivers. They've got dozens of vehicles. Uh, so they're taking notes from these other counties that yeah, have already gotten this in place. Don't reinvent the wheel. Right. Like, yeah, do what other people are doing. This Absolutely. Successful. What is the main goal? Like, like just to drive up and down main streets or like, no, I, you know, what is the, the goal there? I, 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 she didn't go into a lot of detail, but I, I think that the, the overall goal would just be, you know, they would probably establish stops where, you know, you would like have a bus stop. I, like would, Dakota I, bus think, and, I don't want to okay. say too much cause I don't know, but with as many drivers as she's talking about, like in Perry County, like I said, they have dozens of drivers. So I would think there would be a lot of leeway and, you know, the, cause the, the goal here is to get people to have access to transportation in general. So, I mean, as easy it is for us to hop in our car and go places, right? make it as easy, as close to that as possible for these people that don't have that option. Okay. So, and I think the main goal is, you know, obviously to get people to doctor's appointments, to the grocery store. And I mean, there are already, like Jackson Transportation already exists. For sure. Um, but they have a targeted group of people that they're dealing with. This they would do be, a lot of transport for yeah. like you know medical appointments mm-hmm. and things like that. I think this would just be a broader range of opportunity for people to get. Like I need to go to Walmart. I'm going to jump on the bus and go. I need to go to work. I need you know. That's awesome. So I'm sure there's okay. going to be a lot more detail coming out um, on this as it develops. Um, she had to of course seek authorization from the county to even apply for these funds. Um, everything is in line. Uh, I think the final application deadline is next Friday. So I'm sure she'll get that out. I think the funding will come next year. So everything's kind of a year behind. So the next year she'll apply for funding for 2024. And that would be that really large amount of money that would get the ball really rolling in the right direction. Let's do it. Love that. Yeah, definitely. Um, our multimedia journalist, Jeremiah Shaver, went out to Wellston yesterday um, in light of the news that Wellston was able to pass both of their levies, the one for the fire department and the Wellston uh, police department. Mm-hmm. And uh, he went and spoke with the mayor and the fire chief and the police chief and got some comments. We have a video up on our face or yeah, the Telegram News Facebook page right now. Uh, it was loaded yesterday. Uh, it's a little over five minutes. You, sh- you should uh, check that out. Uh, he's also written a story about it. He's, you know, like I said, he got comments from those three guys there. And John Robinson is, I mean, he's very happy that it, this was able to pass on the first try. Um, 
Do we have that video to play? Did you? I think it. We have it, but it's not able to play. Okay. Once James is mended, we will show that. I got Mr. Speed on, so we're calling it a win. (laughs) I did not get the video to work. Heard. Because I was out of time. But we will play it at some point. You are a champ. So (laughs) you you just pat yourself on the back. Pick that hair up off the floor. You're fine, girl. That was was a pretty long video, so I imagine it was... (laughs) Many, many gigabytes. Um, I just didn't know which buttons to push. And it gotcha. wasn't working. I had gotcha. video at one point, no sound. The next time I had sound and no video. <laughs> We're so all good. It's yeah. fine. We, we called that. Yes. <laughs> Tapped out on that one. So Phil can just talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, the police levy was able to pass. Uh, there was, I mean, it was a primary election. The voter turnout wasn't the best. I think just a little over 15% of Jackson County voters and about 18.5% in Vinton County yep. for voter turnout. But nonetheless, the voters in Wellston uh, cast 309 votes in favor of the police levy and 257 votes against. I think there are 23 outstanding provisional ballots, so there, there's not, not going any, to it's not going to make any difference. So that's in place. That's a one mil five year levy, and that was an additional new tax. Now on the fire department side, it passed uh, a little easier. It got 391 votes in favor and 178 against. That also was a one mil. Uh, five-year levy, and that was a replacement levy to take on the new uh, home valuations for the tax base. Um, both of these levies are for general operating expenses. The The fire levy in particular is for gear, uh, turnout gear. As, in, uh, as Jeremiah spoke with Chief Pelletier, that turnout gear only has a shelf life of about seven years. So mm-hmm. Regardless and of it how it has to be custom fit to yeah. the person, like you don't, it's not just like all interchangeable, right? And regardless of if you know you bought it seven years ago and it still looks like it's brand new, you're not allowed to continue to use it. You have right. to renew it. So you know every five years when this levy you know rolls over and if it gets approved again, they use that fund to buy this new equipment for those firefighters because just you know one set of turnout gear as Chief Pelletier told Jeremiah, is between twenty five hundred and five thousand yeah, dollars. It's thousands of dollars. So if you have twenty five firefighters, which they do, right. that's that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yep. So you you know, these are all things that we don't think of. You know, it just right. magically appears, but right. it doesn't just magically appear. And uh and the chief took Jeremiah around uh inside of the the fire station down there on Pennsylvania Avenue, fire station one. Yeah, uh, they have the second one down on Second Street. But um, he took him around and showed him some of the turnout gear, some of the other equipment that this money is used to to buy, and explained a little bit about the cost associated, you know, what this equipment does, um, and his general expression of gratitude to the to the voters of Wellston for approving this again. Um, in the past, you know, these fire levies have 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 always been able to be approved fairly easily. Uh, the last time the police tried to pass a levy, it, it failed by a fairly narrow margin, but this time around it was able to get approved. Um, that one is for general operating expenses, like I said, but to also, depending on the amount of revenue generated, hopefully bolster their staff a little bit more. Um, in the past year and a half or so since uh, Charlie Hudson's taken over as the mayor, they've been in a rebuilding phase of sorts. You know, there for a while they had some layoffs and the staff got dwindled down a little bit. They've built themselves back up quite a bit. They have two sergeants now. They have uh, the chief, obviously. Um, so they're moving in the right direction. And the chief, uh, Chief Robinson also said at the last council meeting that there's some news coming down the pike, some exciting news uh, about the police department and some pending um, partnerships with some agencies down south is what he said. So I don't know what that's going to entail, but he said that that mainly involves uh, issues with drug abuse and those problems that persist in, in Wellston and Jackson County as a whole. Um, and that passing this levy would just make that, you know, even more of a possibility. So we'll see, you know, how, how that news rolls out um, yeah. down the road now since that was able to be passed. And that's a much needed, much needed thing. Um, and, I guess I'll talk about some other uh, election-related news on the statewide side of things. Um, In both Jackson and Vinton County, even though in the state, 
our incumbent governor and lieutenant governor, Mike DeWine and John Husted, were able to garner the majority of the votes on the Republican ticket. Mm -hmm. Um, In Jackson and Vinton County, the candidate uh, Joe Blystone and his running mate Jeremiah Workman were the ones that were the favorites uh, here, and by a lot, as a matter of fact. So in it's both, interesting. yeah, it really is. And I, Blystone really hit Vinton there's, County pretty hard. There's a lot of signs and mm-hmm. <clears throat> whatever around. So he paid a lot of attention to this area um, during his campaign. Now on the statewide side of things, I think he came in third overall with Jim Renacci coming in second. Um, so who had never even heard of before? I, I think I think he was at one point. Maybe the Secretary of State. Okay, I'm not saying he's. I just I not hadn't sure. heard that name before. I mean, he had he had been in some statewide office in the past. I just okay. can't remember exactly which one it was. Um. So Blystone hit hit our area hard. He though. really did. He like, hit, really campaigned. He did. He was very um, present. Um. So this November we'll have our incumbent governor Mike Dewine, and he will be facing uh, current Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley. Uh, who won the Republican ticket easily, or the Democratic ticket easily, uh, statewide and locally. Is that not the, am I wrong? It's the first time a a woman has been nominated. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? It is. And she won handily. I mean, it was, it wasn't close at all. Um, And then uh, the hotly contested race for the U.S. Senate spot (laughs) finally has come to an end. Uh, (laughs) Both... (laughs) I'm kind of going to miss it because the commercials were fantastic. Yeah. It, I mean, it was just like vicious. It really was. <laughs> it really was. Uh, on on the Republican side, J.D. Vance, the author and venture capitalist, uh, came came out ahead statewide and locally. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember who came in second place. I think it was Josh Mandel. Josh Mandel came in second. Yeah. So... That's finally over with. And then on the Democratic side, Tim Ryan won handily. So we'll see those two pitted against one another uh, this fall. Uh, We already obviously have a Democrat, uh, U.S. Senator and Chair Brown. I I couldn't tell you the last time we had two Democratic uh, senators. They're, they're, you know, hoping to or they're going to one of them is going to take on uh, Rob Portman's seat. So, yeah. And he's a Republican. Yes. Yep, he had had that spot for quite a while. Yeah, and then <laughs> we said the other day, "Just come on back, Rob. We don't. Yeah. We're tired of this fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you just stay?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I think the only other thing I had um, on also this happened on Tuesday as well. Most of this news comes from Tuesday. Well, you're full of it. On I know. Tuesday. <laughs> uh, Tuesday was a busy Darn day. Darn it, Pete! Way to leave. <laughs> uh, our Jackson County commissioners and. Um, some Oak Hill Village officials got together with uh, community development consultants of Ohio senior planner Whitaker Wright and went down to Etna Park in Oak Hill. Uh, they had recently used some about $40,000, $41,000 in 2021, 2021 community development block grant neighborhood revitalization grant funds. And they used that to revamp the park and add oh, some cool. new equipment, uh, specifically some ADA compliant equipment for so that all the kids can oh, enjoy the equipment. That. And prior to them doing this, that park had a mix of playground stuff from the 60s and the 90s. And it kind of targeted the older kids and they had no ADA compliant um, pieces of equipment until now. Okay. So they went down and... Uh, Commissioner Hensler read a proclamation. Uh, We had Council President Jennifer Hughes and Mayor McNeil, uh, President Terry McCain, a councilman down there in Oak Hill. And uh, we even had Commissioner Paul Howler break in some of the equipment. I think Courtney has a video of that. There he is. Took a trip down the slide. (laughs) (laughs) And he made it. (laughs) So that that was a good time. Uh, That's hilarious. <laughs> Got yeah. that video to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did real well, Courtney. So I, I want to thank the people in No Kill, uh, no, the that's awesome. village officials, for getting that uh, video clip to us so that we could share that with you. <laughs> I'm sure Paul, Paul Howard was super excited about that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, after he read the the official proclamation, uh, Commissioner Hensler stated that uh, the commissioners were happy to make that investment in the village of Oak Hill. And that they know that the council and administration members are doing what they can to progress the village and to clean up some areas in need. 
and that the playground equipment is a nice addition for the the children of the village to enjoy. So good, very good. You know, isn't playground equipment like part of growing up? Oh, I mean, yeah. now granted, the stuff that we played on. <laughs> How we all didn't die, I'll never know. Yeah. But uh, I think it's a bit safer today. Oh, it's yeah. Like steaming hot metal yes. slide. The slide. <laughs> and it was like, you know, 20 feet tall. Yep. And you got to the top of it. And then, you know, kids fell off of it and every other thing. And, yeah. And then you got to the top of it. And it was 300 degrees. Yep. And they're like, you left the back of your legs stuck to the slide. <laughs> you get the one kid that gets to the top with the 10 kids behind them. And once they get to the top, they they're like, go. I don't want to go. You're like, <laughs> you have to. There's like 10 people behind you. And now at least if they fall off, they've got that rubbery material. <laughs> yeah, and no, stuff. We, like, had we had gravel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blacktop. Which also got so hot that you brought half of yeah. it in from recess. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, I went to Kennison. I mean, we had these crazy, like, tall monkey bars and stuff, and we would hang from our legs and swing around, and then the swings, you'd, like, swing as high as you could and jump out of them yep. onto the black top. I'm like, we what, did were that we, too. what were we thinking? And I went to Colton, so I think that playground equipment was from, like, the 1800s. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With the rusty that was chains. Tall too. It was. It was Really tall. And it was all made of yeah. wood and steel. So, I mean, it was uh, very unforgiving. Got a lot of splinters <laughs> and burns. But yeah. we grew up tough. <laughs> now, before before the equipment in Kelly Lambert Park was taken down recently, because they're they're going to use about $75,000. They're going to redo it, too. Grant funds. Yeah, they're going to redo that. They had those giant, giant metal slides. So Parker got <laughs> to experience that because he said he wanted to go up. And he did that. He got up to the top. Said he did. I said, "You're you have to. I can't. Right. Yeah. I'm too I'm big to go up you. there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, we both can't die here. So he, <laughs> he went down. Too. So he did got that bad. Give him a tetanus shot. <laughs> <laughs> And it wasn't long after that that they removed it and said it was unsafe. So I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Dad of the year right there. <laughs> yeah. Kid, you're coming down yeah. the slide. You're going to get tough. You got to get tough. <laughs> no, hey, listen, we all survived it. Yeah. So. We're better off for it. it. Exactly. And it gives us fun things to talk about here on the program. <laughs> yeah. But there were definitely some weird... Uh, the fact that they let us climb on that stuff. And like, I remember that one, it was like the... The it was like the metal. It was almost like a cage. Yeah, and it, you could like swing on the inside, but then you would get on the outside. And we would play like King of the Hill and mm -hmm. throw each other off of it and stuff. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, I think that one did have a, a rubber mat under it, maybe at Kennison. But mm. <laughs> stupid, stupid. Oh, you live to tell the tale. We <laughs> did. <laughs> we also used to take when they would. Uh, like in our neighborhood, we had a bunch of neighborhood kids, and the church parking lot. They would when they plowed it. This was back when we actually had snow. Yeah. They would plow it, and they would always just accumulate this ginormous pile. And we used to do that too. We would, and it would turn to ice, and we would get to the top of it and throw each other off of it, <laughs> and it was like so tall. I'm thinking, why did we do that? Lord that was of the, so nice. Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Again, and we didn't wear helmets or anything. We survived, mm -hmm. but. Anyway, all right. Well, so that's the news. That is the news. All right. We've so, got a. We have National Day of Prayer events tonight. Um, that is tonight, isn't it? In Vinton County, it's at noon. That'll be in uh, the village of MacArthur today at noon. Red Thompson will be up there to cover that. Uh, we have the the county's event at seven o'clock tonight at the YMCA here in Jackson. Here in Jackson. Then Wellston has its own event. It also starts at seven p.m. and it's at Wellston Middle School. And Pastor uh, Michael Yardnicek will be over that. Okay. They've got an entire itinerary established for that. We just got it out yesterday. It's on uh, the telegramnews.com and on our Facebook page. So check that out. Um, we have the Wellston Council meeting tonight at 7. Uh, yeah, so we've got, a, we've got a full slate. And then uh, starting today and running through tomorrow, we have the Jackson High School uh, Arts Festival. And we'll oh, have that's always a good one. Oh yeah, yeah, and that runs I think from eight a.m. to eight p.m. today, and then I think can you just commensurate go to the high times tomorrow? And see it? Yeah, and it's open it's to the public. The, I'm pretty sure it is. Alice in Wonderland theme, so that's yeah. pretty cool. Oh neat! And we'll have uh, Jeremiah going down I think either this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon and talk with uh, JHS art instructor Sean Gentry and to take a look around, see what uh, sort of pieces they have there. Yeah, and um, 
That'll be a good time. I always love that because I'm not artistic in any way, shape, or form. But, yeah. like, they would let us, like, I like to write. Mm-hmm. I know you like to write, yeah, but yeah. I love to do like the poetry and all the, mm-hmm. that fun stuff. And they would let, so that was like our, you know, the person that couldn't draw or paint or whatever, that was always the, you know, your creative outlet that way. So that was fun. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And they, they always have a, a cool program too, that they do um, in addition to this arts festival that Sean Gentry got started a few years ago where um, they collaborate with second graders and high schoolers where in the Aww. past, it's been uh, they they draw monsters. They they the the, the younger kids draw their idea of uh, a monster, and then they take those drawings and they give them to the high school kids, and then they use different mediums like clay and now three D three D printers oh, and recreate yeah. the the same version of what the younger kids did. Oh, and I, I think that. that'll happen again this year. But that's always really fun to go and and see, and they put those on display at the high school too. <laughs> A um, monster created by a second grader. I yeah. can only imagine what like, comes out of their brain. There's some really cool stuff that comes out. And, <laughs> and those 3D printers are amazing to oh, see. Yeah. And, and it's it's awesome that they were able to get the grant funding to buy them because they're super expensive. And even mm-hmm. the materials they use are yeah. super expensive. That liquid polymer mm-hmm. that they put in, it's it's really cool to see it happen. And Sean's very passionate about all this. I mean, he's he's a super... Uh, driven guy he's really into this so they're lucky to have somebody like that that's willing to go out and seek the grant funds and uh, get them this up-to-date like state-of-the-art equipment that they Love have that because that's the wave of the future I it mean, really that's is like where we're going with all that stuff so. and you can actually see that being created you know in real time so that's cool very cool very good well see phil you did great thanks <laughs> <laughs> it's all in there somewhere i just gotta <laughs> make myself pull it out and talk him. about it yeah <laughs> Uh, do we have the weather or anything? No, we don't. No, we don't have the there weather. There is no but, weather. Um, it's going to rain tomorrow. It's I looking know. a little rainy. Today, not so much, but uh, Friday, Saturday, a little chance of rain there in the forecast. But it will not rain on the Turkey Festival Parade because that would be just be Nope, they'll stupid. keep on trucking. Yep, keep then on it's going. It's supposed to get pretty warm next week, I think. I hope We're so. We're going to get we, back up into the 80s. We need it. Yeah. That'd be great. All right. Got to get out of here for the day. Thank you, Courtney, for pushing all the right buttons. You're welcome. She, she did so well. And thanks, Phil, for spending your time with us this morning because no I know problem. you were very, very busy. And, of course, Rich from Mr. Speed. Thanks to them. And uh, if you can get out Saturday and check them out. Yeah. Come fun. see us at the Wild Turkey Festival. That's right. Come see us. Yep. All right. Have a great day. We'll be back here tomorrow with our good friend Jess Kelly Adams and hopefully Fancy. So Yay. look forward to that. Maybe she'll sing us a song or two. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.